Thanks. Okay, good morning. Uh, yeah, uh, so this, this is not a regular like, a research uh, seminar, so it's kind of more like educational. So this will be a little longer, okay? Uh, but if you have a question at any time, just stop me, uh, raise your hand so I can answer your question, okay? So what I'm going to uh, talk about is the uh, wear of engineering materials and protection. And actually, this is from one of my uh, graduate course. I took some part and then mixed it with uh, some research we got and put that to make this whole thing, okay? Uh, so I will, I will uh, talk about for this the outline or content. So part two, part two, I will talk about the briefly talk about the wear mode mechanism testing and characterization. And uh, I will focus on the three major uh, industrial wear mode, quite a commonly encountered in industrial abrasion, erosion, and corrosive wear. And part two, I uh, talk about uh, our ferrous materials, the wear behavior, basically the steel and the cast iron. Uh, so so where, where is the surface failure process occurred when the two surfaces in contact uh, rub each other? Uh, and this one is the most destructive, one of the most destructive processes in industrial. For, for instance, the, uh, you know, the, in the mining industry, uh, your shovel, that's a typical machine, machinery, uh, uh, you have a wear. Uh, you have, uh, for example, we work more, most, you know, closely with the uh, oil sand industry in Alberta. So they have uh, oil sand slurry pump in pillar, not erosion, that's a very uh, severe. And also uh, in you know, manufacturing, you have a tool, you have a machine, wear, uh, even your computer, and uh, we have, uh, have wear, okay? Uh, because this is the one, some of my slides from my uh, lecture, so there's some handwriting. Uh, uh, wear and the friction cause a a large amount of capital loss resulting from material loss, failure of mechanical systems, and also energy loss, okay? As well as a lost production, which is, this is also huge. When your machine shut down, now you, uh, your production stop, so you, you probably lose a lot, okay? Uh, so I'll give you an example in the uh, Alberta oil sand, uh, as what I, I know, this data is from the three uh, company in operation. They spend not that much money uh, every year for the repair and uh, replacement of worn facilities, okay? So I'll give you a rough idea for the for oil sand uh, industrial because this, we deal with a lot of uh, uh, problem with uh, oil sand industrial. So this is the roughly a whole process. Uh, uh, oil sand, the, this is basically a mining process. They do the surface mining to use the, uh, use the drag line, use the shovel to get oil sand. It's not sand, it's kind of piece of rock, but that kind of rock uh, contain 13% uh, oil, okay? Then they get that one, then they uh, use the crusher to break those big uh, chunk of uh, uh, rocks and then get a uh, sand. Then they use a scream to um, get a small, small sand and mix it with a hot water and then send it to their uh, kind of separation cell and to get those uh, first uh, separation. Then the waste of the, kind of waste, that's the tailing water, uh, tailing slurry. You have a sand, but they already take the, extract the oil from the, from the sand. And you send it to the tailing pond. The rest they send it to the, we call the dirty bitumen. They send it to their, um, also the, um, some cell to do the treatment. Then finally they send, the, use a pipeline send it to their refining uh, plant to get the oil out, okay? So during this process here, you have a wear of your shovel, uh, you have a wear of your truck, and, and you have a crusher wear, and uh, you have wear of your screen, and, and uh, also the pipeline, and a lot of pumps used in the, in the pipeline. This is the long, quite a long, you know, number of kilometers long, not only short distance, okay? Uh, so you have a pipeline erosion. Then here you have some corrosive wear there. So a lot of wear problem in the oil sand industry. Okay, so just a few, few typical example. A drug line, here you have a wear and wear. And uh, usually they use the, for example here, they use the shoes to put on the, on the teeth. Otherwise, you know, if this one damaged and you replace, that's too expensive. So they use the shoes, okay. Uh, you can see this one after uh, some, before they used the uh, martensite steel, 
the shoe. Three days, you get something like that. So now they put the hard facing, use the tungsten carbide uh, uh, nickel alloy based uh, um, hard facing material put on top. And this can last uh, three, three weeks. So much, uh, much better, okay? And uh, your oil, you have a drilling bit, you have a wear there. Uh, this is the slurry pump in pillar after uh, three months application and you see the damage, okay? And uh, uh, you are truck bed, you, know, you they dump this the oil sand and you have uh, you know, that, that kind of thing always scratch the surface. So also a lot of wear. So they, now they put the uh, tungsten carbide uh, uh, hard facing materials on the, on, the, on, the, on the surface to prevent or reduce the damage. And crusher also have um, impact and uh, wear. Uh, and this is, the, this is not oil sand, this is just a regular uh, giant uh, excavator to do the tunneling stuff. And you can imagine a lot of wear there, okay? So, so wear uh, cost, the cost due to the wear is, is huge. Uh, you have, uh, for example, you have a mining facility, agriculture uh, machinery failure, uh, autom automobile, aircraft engine, uh, and electronic devices. As long as you have a dynamic contact, you always have a wear, okay? Uh, also, you have friction. Now, friction can cost uh, also a lot of uh, uh, capital loss. For example, a seizure, that is the one of the uh, uh, typical kind of adhesive wear. And when they, uh, or you are, for example, fretting, when that kind of thing, uh, you know, shaking, vibrate, when temperature increased, they could have suddenly stuck. We call it a seizure. Now you, because your machine is still running, and then you got to suddenly stop, and you got to you know, fracture, you got to feed the whole system, okay? Uh, now you have to replace the whole system, okay? And also you have an energy loss, you know, do the machining, wire drawing, transportation, you lose them because of the friction, and you have to use energy to overcome the friction uh, the force, so that takes a lot of energy, okay? So people uh, estimate, this is the quite older uh, data, that people estimate, say, um, the, because of wear, cost your um, uh, GDP, uh, one to two percent of your country, the GDP, okay? So I just listed here, for example, uh, uh, US, uh, this is their GDP uh, 2010, so this is the, their GDP, so 1%, 2%, that's, that's, that's a huge amount, kind of waste, okay? Uh, Europe, 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 and this is the, their uh, GDP, okay? So because, the, because of engineering significance, okay, and also involved a, a safety issue, so where friction has become a long-term subject for scientists and engineers, okay? Um, and has become a, a scientific discipline, so we have a terminology called a tribology, okay? And the ology, you know, we have a biology, a lot of ology. So people use the tribology to describe the wear and the friction and any you know, aspect of engineering and also scientific aspect of fundamental issues. So they use this one to describe that kind of, that subject or discipline, okay? And, and the wear is the, uh, very complex the surface failure process involving the mechanical, metallurgical, materials, physical, and chemical processes, okay? So here I'll give you a, a figure illustrate to you those processes. For example, here, uh, of course, when you slide uh, um, asperity or counterface on the surface, you have adhesion there, okay? So you have an atomic chemical interaction so that's involved uh, uh, physics. Now you have a cracking, fracture, so obviously you have a fracture mechanics and a fracture kind of physics, okay? Now you have a material deformation, so that's a mechanical behavior of materials. And now you have a frictional heating, that's the physics involved. Now you have a phase transformation, you may have a phase transformation, microstructure change, so that's a metallurgy, okay? Now here you have, uh, your temperature could be during the sliding, your temperature increase, so you have oxidation. Now if you are uh, wear in a corrosive environment, now you have a chemical reaction there. So you, have, you can see this is the process is quite a comp you know, complicated, complex, involved in many uh, factors. So because of, because of those things, 
and tribology is a multidisciplinary uh, subject, okay, including the mechanics, material science, metallurgy, physics, chemistry, and has become a one of the exciting area in science, surface science, and engineering. Okay, especially the last decade, uh, nanotechnology. You have to deal with the nanoscale adhesion. People, a lot of uh, uh, you know chemists and uh, physicists involved. Before it's more like a materials uh, engineering or scientists, but now we have uh, we have a lot of people uh, in physics or chemistry involved in the uh, tribology and nanoscale nanotribology. Okay. Okay, so that's just, just a rough background. Now I'd like to you know, get to our part one, uh, the wear mode mechanisms and uh, testing characterization. Okay. Uh, the, the wear may occur in a different mode and with different failure mechanisms. Okay. Uh, a material may ex ex exhibit high resistance to wear in a specific mode, but perform, could perform poorly in another mode, okay? So therefore, we have to understand a different wear mode. Otherwise, you, you use material. This material could be very good, and you use for all the application. You find it probably poor, okay? Um, so we need to understand uh, different wear mode, and how to, what's a mechanism, and, uh, and their, how to test, how to characterize, okay? So these are three, uh, major wear mode uh, frequently encountered in industry. Okay? So I will talk about one by one. Uh, I think I used the wrong fire, just wait a second. Is it not? Okay, yeah, we just get one, yeah. Open it. And then, and then um, this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Go. Okay, yeah, this is one update uh, two days ago. <laughs> it's the wrong one. Okay, uh, so so the, the abrasive wear. Uh, this is the wear caused by the hard asperity. Okay, you have a counterface, you have a roughness, so you have a lot of asperity, uh, or or hard particles. Uh, that are forced against a, a move around the solid face. Okay, for example, this you have a free flow ore, uh, and that one, you know, slide on the surface, damage the material. So that one we call the free, uh, we call the low stress abrasion. Okay, for example, you are your truck, uh, you you dump your tr the truck, so you have a piece of you know, uh, ore slide on the surface, scratch the surface. So that's a low stress uh, abrasion. Also, you are, you know, for example, you are shovel teased uh, agriculture kind of machine, and that's the stress not very strong. So you you plowing and you have a uh, abrasion under the relatively low stress, not very high stress. Okay, and also we have another one, a high stress abrasion. For example, a crusher, and you let your big piece of uh, your your all get in and crush. So you have a larger stress, and also uh, sliding, scratching. Uh, so that's a high stress um, abrasion. Okay, uh, abrasive wear is basically is a mechanical mechanical wear. Okay, now uh, you have that uh, 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 asperity move on, you def deform it, you cut it. Okay, so for the ductile materials, typically you can see this kind of morphology. You have a plowing, you have a groove. Okay, uh, low stress abrasion, and this is the a crusher, and uh, this is the high stress abrasion. Okay, 
Uh, for abrasion, we have uh, two types. One is the um, two-body abrasion. Another one is a three-body uh, uh, abrasion. So two-body one, you are, that's asperity. It's a fixed. It will not, they, are, they will not rotate. They just scratch the surface. Another one, three-body, just uh, between the two faces. And you have a particle there, and they can rotate. They can scratch your surface. So three-body. Now, obviously, this one is more severe. Okay. Uh, mechanism. Uh, abrasion uh, from the uh, ductile materials. For ductile materials, basically you have a plowing, okay, or cutting. So this is the, for example, this is the plowing. You have, uh, you know, you scratch the surface. This one you, you cut the surface for ductile materials. For brittle materials, uh, you have a, a fracture, okay. For example, this is the uh, ceramic or brittle materials, and you have a uh, Fracture and uh, delamination. Okay, so that's the uh, brittle materials abrasion mechanism. Okay, now just give you a very simple uh, uh, derivation to see the what's an important parameter control the uh, abrasive wear for ductile materials. Okay, so so this is the kind of asperity, uh, cortica asperity. Okay, you you get under force, you push and you slide and see what's the damage to the material, okay? So if you look at this one, if you give a force, delta L, uh, under this force, uh, your contact area, you look from top. So that would be the contact area. So there will be the AC at the pi A square, and that's proportional to your, uh, the force. But if you measure the hard, then you get the less, your area will be smaller. So the hard is here, okay? And, uh, uh, and from the cross-section, because this one you move, you plow in the, the surface. Uh, so this will be your uh, contact area, okay? So contact area, uh, AT, that's equal to the you know, triangle, okay? So this is the triangle, uh, the base, 2A, and uh, height, okay? Now this height depends on the, uh, your geometry of your, your uh, asperity. So X equal to uh, here is the, you know, from this one you can, you can get. Now, now you have uh, your cross-section area equal to two a square and tangent of theta, okay? So now, now you, can, you can get your uh, volume loss. So with this one move a small distance, and your volume, remove the volume equal to your cross-section AT times the, the displacement, okay, of your T. So this one equal to a square tangent dl, and then we have this um, a square related to the force and your hardness. So a square equal to this. Okay. Now we get this equation. Now we can, you know, integration to determine the total volume loss or volume remove the volume uh, when your asperity move the distance l. Okay. So V will be equal to your integration dV, which is the, this one. So you do integration dL from the zero to L, you get the equation, okay? So this is your final uh, total volume loss, okay? So, so here you see your volume loss proportional to your uh, force and distance, inversely proportional to your hardness. And this is the geometry uh, kind of factor, okay? So, when you have uh, um, just uh, a surface, you have a, a number of uh, uh, asperity. So we have, a, we can use this the average tangent, uh, just represent your, the roughness of your surface, okay? It's average of tangent theta value for all the individual, uh, your asperity. Now people give you a, a coefficient, okay, the k, uh, equal to this. Now you can write your uh, volume loss, will be equal to K, uh, this is your load, this is the hardness, and this is your sliding distance. So this is the well-known Archer equation. People use the in industrial, use this equation to um, roughly you know, determine how strong your material is. Okay? Basically this is for steel, for the uh, metallic materials, not for ceramic, because ceramic will have a uh, toughness is another issue. This is one we deal with uh, 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 ductile materials. So, so K here is known as the abrasive wear coefficient. Uh, 
And this equation uh, often agrees with experiment observations, um, but you still have some exception, okay? Uh, but generally speaking, it's, it's fine for ductile materials. Uh, so this K for the two body aberration K in, in that range, for three body, and it's you know, one order magnitude lower. So three body, you get the less wear. It's 10 times, probably 10 times lower than uh, two body aberration. Okay, so that's the ductile materials. For the brittle materials, and we don't have a, we don't have analytic equation. That's difficult, okay, to get. But empiric, uh, we have empirical uh, equation. This is the one shows you a volume loss uh, equal to you have a you know coefficient there. Then you you have a, this is the load, okay, and uh, you see here hardness, Young's modulus, and also we have another one, a toughness. So this is the this is very important. Okay. This is another one show you a uh, volume loss proportional to the load, and, and the power, and now you have a hardness, you have a toughness, sliding distance. Okay. So so from here you can see uh, uh, in addition to the hardness, we need our materials tough. Now we can get the less wear. Okay. So you have to have your materials first. You have the materials harder, hard. Okay. If soft, you get the more wear. Uh, you need the uh, Young's modulus high, which is relate. Okay, then you have uh, um, uh, uh, if you have a higher toughness, and you get the less wear. Reduce the load, yeah, and you reduce the volume loss. Okay, so this gives us some idea to uh, see what important factors influence your wear. So you can control your materials. For example, um, you can increase their strength, uh, increase the toughness. Also, you can, through the mechanical design of your system, reduce the load, load. Then you can reduce the, minimize the, the wear. So this gives us some idea, okay? Uh, so that's the, uh, some analytical empirical equation. But as I said, the wear is a very complicated process involved in many factors. So I want to show you um, uh, some factors influence the uh, abrasive wear. Uh, first one, this is already from Hatch equation. Uh, hardness, okay? So if you increase hardness, you are wear reduced, okay? So this is from, already know from the actual equation. Now, uh, the abrasive particle size, uh, this one can affect your wear, okay? Now, you see here, this one, if you increase the particle size, your wear increased, but later on become uh, saturated, okay? So for this part, this is uh, easy to understand. If you increase the size, uh, you, you generate a larger stress, okay? For example, uh, if you have the same amount of material, uh, this, the particle, now you have a many uh, contact points, so you are stress shared by those points. But if you have a one, just one particle, bigger one, now, now your force will concentrate here, will be larger and easy to damage the material, okay? So that's the reason why it increased. But, but once, once this one, to a certain level, uh, become saturated, and people investigate and find, oh yeah, this is kind of a, a clocking, clocking of your abrasive particles. So they, they stay there in, in those um, groove, groove or, or some uh, area, stay there, and then to support the uh, quantum phase. So quantum phase there, you are just you know, supported by those particles, and that can make your wear become stable, not the increased or further increased, okay? Um, asperity uh, shape, uh, obvious from actual equation, this is the one, uh, the K related to this geometry factor. So if you are theta, this one, tangent theta large, and then that means your material angularity, particle angularity increased, you get more wear, okay? That's, that's obvious, you increase the stress. Uh, microstructure effect, uh, microstructure, for example, uh, one of the features is your grain size, okay? Now, if your particle is larger than, larger than your grain size, now your microstructure is important, okay? Because that can affect your wear. For example, your grain boundary, whether or not it's strong, you have an impurity segregation, make your grain boundary poor, and that can affect your uh, wear. But, okay, for example, here. But if, if your particle is smaller than your grain size, much smaller than grain size, and basically you deal with uh, 
single crystal, single crystal. So your grain boundary become less important, okay? Even you have a poor boundary, uh, may not be a, a major concern, okay? Because you, are, you basically you deal with a single crystal, okay? Uh, lubricant, uh, generally speaking, lubricant reduce the friction and therefore reduce the wear, okay? Uh, so that's a major one, general, general trend. But sometimes you will find, uh, okay, now if your asperity can penetrate the lubricant, uh, now your lubricant may not cause a larger reduction in uh, wear rate, okay? Also, uh, could your, your lubricant may reduce the friction between the abrasive particle and the metal surface, that's decreasing the clocking of the abrasive or wear debris. Now you can make your wear rate increased, okay? This is, you may have something like that, okay? That's why I said, um, generally speaking, we add a lubricant, we reduce the wear, but sometimes if you find that I add a lubricant, my wear increase, now you don't know why, and this could be the reason, okay? Or this is another possible reason. For example, if you have a high speed sliding, and you could have, you know, you could squeeze your liquid here, enclose this area, and squeeze the liquid into the, the gap. So if that's a crack, crack will propagate. Okay, so this might be another reason. If you see something unexpected, so this is the way you can, this is something to help you to think of, you know, think about what the possible reason, okay? Uh, abrasive wear in wet environment uh, might be reduced slightly due to the lubrication and cooling effect, okay? Um, for example, water. Uh, but if your liquid is corrosive, then, then your wear will be, uh, will be significantly increased, which we will talk about in uh, uh, later on, we'll talk about the corrosive wear, okay? Okay, so for this abrasive wear testing, and uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, we call the G65 abrasive, uh, okay, dry sand rubber wear um, uh, abrasion testing, okay? Let's get another one. Uh, so here, basically, we have a rubber, rubber wear here. And this is your sample. You give a load, and you are, your sand goes through. So this rubber wear grab the sand and scratch the surface, okay? So this one in the oil sand, uh, people found it's pretty, um, pretty good uh, kind of technique to rank materials, okay? Uh, this is another one called a uh, block and ring. So you have a steel ring or, or, or grinding uh, wheel and you put your sample here uh, under stress, under force, so you get a damage, so you, you get a wear. Okay, that's broken rain. Uh, you can measure the weight loss before the wear, after wear, you see the, what's the weight loss, and that one you can use it to estimate uh, or rank materials, okay? Uh, this is the ping on disk. Uh, you have your, either this is your sample, or your sample can be a, a pin. So that one slide on a ceramic plate or metal plate, then this one will be damaged, you better weight loss. Or you can measure the, if this is a sample, you can measure the wear track and to get an idea how much material is removed during the process, okay? So this is the one of the um, uh, kind of um, commercial te tester. A block and ring, a drum, and you have a sand uh, abrasive paper, and this, sand, this uh, sample under pressure and uh, your drum rotate, and your sand move uh, laterally, so you can go the spiral path. So your surface always be wear, be worn by a, a fresh surface, not like this one, you just keep doing the same. Because this one, when you uh, initially and later on, your condition change, this is always fresh, so always the same condition, okay? So this is the one. Uh, those are a typical tester in the, in the industry, and also uh, laboratory. Okay, so that's a testing for you to rank materials, uh, but we needed to analyze the worn surface. This is very important, okay? Uh, that helps you to understand what's the mechanism, okay? For example, uh, here you have uh, where you, you analyze the surface, you see that here you have a plus deformation, okay? This is the one on the on the polymer, and you also see the you know, larger plastic deformation tearing. This is on ceramic, okay? And you can see the uh, fracture, 
delamination. So by analyze the surface, you will see your material, what kind of thing you should do to your materials. For example, uh, for example, this one, and it's, oh yeah, I have a larger plaster deformation. I should make my material strong. Okay? This one, oh, you see, oh, my material is strong enough, but uh, not tough, I get a fracture. So you, for this material, uh, you should uh, improve the toughness. Okay? So this gives you an idea to modify your materials. The testing only tell you materials, this, which one's good, which one's bad. Okay? As ranking, this will tell you some, uh, you know, get some information about the mechanism. Okay, so that's a abrasive wear. Now, second one is the uh, uh, erosive wear. Uh, erosive wear uh, is resulting from the solid particle impingement at a high speed. Okay, and also could it be a, a liquid, could it be the gas bubble? You have a pressure, you get a kind of impact. Uh, example is the slurry pump impeller eroded by the solid particles. Okay, or emission of uh, 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 Erosion of a missile down by, by rain. Okay, for example, this is the impeller. You already saw this one, uh, slurry pumps. So you have a particle impingement. And you got a damage, and this is the uh, slurry pipe pipeline. Send those the tailing slurry to the tailing pond. Okay, so here you get a you get a damage. So that's the erosion. Um, And uh, erosion could be not only by solid particle, could be by water, by soft material, okay? Uh, this one just show you the rain drop when this the missile, uh, you know, high speed uh, flow flying in the, in the sky, and the rain drop, high speed impact can damage the surface, okay? And this one showed the um, aluminum surface uh, damaged by a, um, by a water jet, okay? Water jet. So, even water, very soft liquid, still can damage your materials, okay? Um, so that's erosion. Uh, okay, mechanism. Uh, erosion, and we have, if, if this ductile material, we have a plowing, we have a cutting, okay? So this is the morphology, you can see the surface, uh, plowing, cutting. Now if you have a brittle materials, and uh, now you got, uh, you know, high speed impact, you get a kind of indentation, now you get a fracture, you get a delamination, so you will see the, some surface, okay? Um, okay, now, uh, again, we do just a little uh, uh, derivation to, uh, to see what's the factors influence the erosion, okay? So if you have a particle uh, impact the surface, for example, we have a, a Velocity v, so we have a vertical velocity, we have a horizontal one, okay? So we want to see how this particle under this speed, how much, how deep it can go, go down, and then what's the energy or speed which you can help it slide laterally, so then you can, you can see the damage to the surface, okay? So you are, you are contact area uh, will be equal to, similar to our abrasion, uh, will be uh, proportional to the force normal force, and also inversely proportional to your uh, hardness, okay? Uh, and this force is impact force. So impact force should be equal to uh, your velocity momentum change. So this is your velocity change or acceleration. Initially come down and either stop or, or you know, bounce. Uh, so in, for the dark time materials, we just let this one equal to from initial to zero. So the other one is the acceleration mass. So that's a force, okay? So therefore you are, uh, from, from this equation, uh, you are, you are force equal to A, A, C, okay? Now, now we'll get this one, now both sides we time dx. Dx, so time dx, there will be dv, dx, dt, and so this will be the velocity, okay? Then I have, I do in decreasing, your velocity from initial uh, speed to zero, okay? And this side is from initially from zero 
to D. That's the depth. Okay. So you have this equation. Now you do the integration. Then, then this side, this side, you can have uh, the depth and average contact area from there. You can calculate. Okay. So that's your uh, depth and the contact area. So that's the volume of the indent, indentation volume, and which is equal to this side you see here. This is your mass velocity square 2h. So this is your kinetic energy divided by hardness. Okay? So therefore, um, so if your particle impingement, that's the uh, uh, vertical degree, uh, 90 degree vertically impinged the surface, now your volume of a crater will be equal to uh, this, okay, this. Now, if you have, a, if your lateral speed is not e equal to zero, okay, then you have a similar kind of a derivation. You will have your uh, volume sliding at the groove. That will be proportional to your also kinetic energy of your lateral velocity, not uh, uh, associate the energy divided by hardness, okay? So your total, your total volume loss uh, is proportional to your kinetic energy and, uh, and uh, divided by the hardness. So this is the K, it's a parameter, which you can, you can use that one to in include the different other possible inferences, okay? So you see, uh, if you have a high speed, larger uh, mass, so your kinetic energy high, you get more damage, okay? If your meter is hard, you get less damage, okay? So this is a two uh, important parameter factor you are aware. Okay, so people did experiment to to see whether or not this you know, consistent with your simple derivation. So you see here increase the speed, and your erosion increased. Okay, that's a log of scale. So they found this match this the uh, agree with this equation, and this is the hardness. Okay, and uh, uh, so basically this one. People use that one for the, for the ductile materials. That, that, that's it, uh, give you the major mechanism there, okay? Uh, so for brittle materials, and we don't have an analytical equation, but people uh, you know, summarize the data, fitting the data fitting, and they found uh, uh, the damage should be follow this equation, okay? So R is the, R is the uh, particle size, and velocity, and this is the density of your uh, erosion particle, uh, toughness, hardness, okay? So you see here, for dark time materials, N here is the two, okay? But for brittle materials, it's more than two, it's the 3.2, uh, and, and toughness is important here. This is another equation, show um, velocity, power, that's a 2.4. Uh, now in this case, uh, toughness, but hardness here, and different from that one. One is the bottom, one is the top. So, so people say, okay, let's see the fitting, data fitting to see these two equations. And they found there's two equations, both of them can you know, fit the data. So that means here, this one, uh, you know, the bottom, that's your K, okay, you see here. This is your, your, your hardness here, the bottom. But this one hard is on the top. So that means for the brittle materials, your hardness is less important. Okay, less important. Important thing is your toughness. And uh, those data, basically we deal with ceramic. So that, that already, those materials already hard, hard enough. So we needed to more focus on their toughness. Hard, t uh, hardness is less important. Okay. okay. Uh, so that's the mechanism, some analytical analysis. Uh, now we see the factors influence the um, corrosive wear, uh, no, uh, erosive wear, okay? So uh, first thing is the uh, impact angle, okay? So for dark time materials, experiment shows uh, if we have a low speed, low angle, okay? Now your wear is zero. Now increase the angle, your wear increase, but there's a maximum around the, you know, 30 degree, to 45 degree for metallic materials, then decreased, okay? Decreased. Uh, 
yeah, at a high angle, your, your wear decreased. Uh, for brittle materials, uh, your angle increased and the curve will not like this, the curve just go high. Okay? So high angle get more damage. Uh, the reason is for metal, a uh, high angle, I don't get much wear because your material is still there. You just, you just give a kind of indentation, but your material is still on the surface. You don't lose much material. So that's the reason why here you get a lower wear. But low angle, you just plow in, you take, you know, take the materials away. So you get mm -hmm. the maximum wear there. For this one, involve the fracture delamination. So 90 degree, the whole energy you know, generated a fracture delamination. But inclined one, uh, you just partially, you know, part of the energy used to fracture materials, but some of just your particles still flying, okay? So, so this is the uh, uh, kind of typical kind of, uh, 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 kind of figure people they used to, to demonstrate the uh, angle inference. Okay, so this is the aluminum. Okay, so aluminum at uh, low angle, you got a maximum wear and a decrease. And this is a uh, alumina, you see the maximum wear is the 90 degree, okay? So from this one, give us the uh, uh, idea. Now if you are wear, uh, you have impact angle near the 90 degree, and uh, you should use the tough material, ductile material. Tough materials, that's more uh, proper um, uh, materials, okay? And if your impact angle is small, uh, use harder materials. For example, you ceramic nozzle, okay? You do the sand blasting and nozzle, and you should use the ceramic. If you use a metal and the damage it quick, okay? A velocity, of course, we already uh, talked about the, from equation you can see. So your erosion rate proportional to the velocity and the power is n. Uh, for the dark time materials, n around the two, which is already simple uh, derivation already show us. Now for the brittle materials, n uh, is three or higher, okay? Now if you have a high speed erosion, for example, your, your velocity 200 meters per second, now this n will be higher, okay? The higher, example, four to five, uh, and the reason is this is related to the dislocation dynamics, okay? Uh, if, you make, if your speed, the strain rate are high, your dislocation movement generation will become difficult, okay? But you still need to accommodate the deformation, then your material you know, has to uh, be a fracture, okay? Like, like you push someone, you push this person from zero speed zero to one meter per second. If you gradually push, uh, if you are the person be you know, pushed, you don't feel pain, you just feel somebody push you. But if somebody push you very quick, punch. Now punch you from zero to one meter per second, and you feel pain, okay? Because that you don't want to move, and punch you, give you, you need to very short time to move quick, so that means your acceleration will be larger, and you need a larger force. That's a Newton's law of motion, okay? Then you get a, 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 you get a fraction. Okay, because you don't want to move, you cannot move, the acceleration is too high, now you will be damaged, okay? Okay, hardness. Um, hardness, basically your erosion resistance increased with uh, increase in the, we, we talk about intrinsic hardness, okay? Uh, that's a one, if you like a material, um, hardness high, you get a more uh, resistance to erosion. Uh, but people found the experiment shows if your heart is increased by cold work, it may not be a uh, significant, you know, improve the erosion resistance, okay? The, the reason, like hmm? why, why is it like that? Why is it like this? I'll show you here. So, so here, for example, this is the uh, deformation, okay? Uh -huh. You do the tensile test. Yeah. So when you reach the, there, yeah. now you remove the load. Yeah. Now, now you have a residual strain there. Okay, next time, so you make it become harder. Yeah. So next time when you deform it, you will follow this line, right? Mm -hmm. So that means the material is hard, this is your yielding point. But your, your fracture strain becomes shorter. 
And this is the whole, this area under the curve is the whole energy absorbed before failure. Now you are, now you are material, you absorb this much energy before failure. So you become harder, but your energy absorption lower, okay? But this is, this is a simple, this is the tensile in the real situation, uh, rolling, forging, it's not a follow, it's a single tensile pass. So it's different, but that one still, you can improve, but you cannot, you may not get a significant improvement because this kind of mechanism, okay? So I show you um, this one, this is the people, um, the experiment, uh, show those are our element, so that's their hardness, intrinsic, okay? That's the nature, literally hard, naturally weak, and you see that the resistance increased as the hardness increased. This is the uh, uh, tool steel and uh, uh, carbon steel, and uh, uh, they increase the hardness by uh, heat treatment, uh, introduce a second phase. Uh, they become harder, but their resistance to erosion uh, do not show much. So this is some, ex some experiment observation. Not always, we observe it. We you know, in increase the strength by a sec to the second phase, we still see improvement. So this is just some, some material. But mechanism is you, you gain a harness, but you lose the toughness. You lose the capability of absorption. Or energy absorption before failure, okay? So this one you just keep in mind that not always, but you may find something like this, okay? So not be surprised. Okay, temperature effect. Uh, in general, you increase temperature, materials become soft, you get more damage, okay? Uh, you see here, now, this is the temperature and you are, uh, this is the thickness of loss, that's a wear loss increased, but when temperature are high enough, you get oxide form, uh, and then you have a layer there put bearing the, uh, uh, the load, then you will find that you are aware may not be uh, high, or maybe stable, or even decreased, okay? For example, here, when the, when the, when the oxide become thicker, uh, wear decreased, okay? Yeah, so, so it really depend on, yeah. depend on your oxide scale, not always like this, yeah. Uh, and uh, for example here, uh, this is the one show, this is the steel, okay? So increase temperature, you are wear increase because it makes it become soft. Then you have oxide form and you wear decrease. Then when your temperature high enough, uh, you have a spoliation of your oxide. They cannot stay and uh, easy to be removed, then you get, ooh, Quicker jump, okay? And it also depends on the material. Uh, if your material oxide is very poor and uh, you know, easy to be damaged, then you will get a you know, different uh, one. But this just tell you that's the uh, possible factors, okay? Uh, particle size, particle the, uh, uh, shape. Now, if you have a you know, angular, now easy to cut material, okay? So you get a more st stress concentration stress, you get a more damage, okay? Now if your size increased, uh, your kinetic energy increased, your each single impact, you have a larger force, then you can generate more damage, okay? Uh, um, also, ratio of your particle size and your microstructure features. So if this particle is big, then your second phase, then you needed to you know, modify, control, optimize your microstructure to get the uh, best performance. But if your particle is smaller than, much smaller than your second phase, then you modify the microstructure may not be very effective because you deal with a single, single phase, okay? For testing, uh, so for testing, uh, erosion, Erosion testing, uh, for example, we have a slurry pot test, tester, okay? So you, are, you, are, you put your liquid and the sand inside, now your sample rotate in, 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 a, in a container. Uh, we should have some uh, buffer here, plate, to break the slurry flow 
otherwise everything rotates, so you don't have a larger force. Okay, uh, this is the slurry part. So you can evaluate erosion in a dry sand in a corrosive uh, environment. Okay, different speed, different temperature, uh, air jet erosion. So you can you know blow high speed below your sand with the air flow and uh, impact surface at different angle. Uh, now you can you can you know, see either see their uh, wear track uh, or weight loss. You can get some idea about your materials. Uh, also, if you uh, if you don't have a you know equipment, your commercial one, but you want to do erosion, you can make a very simple one. Okay, so this is one we we a long time ago in the, the beginning we do the sand blasting. We do this you know university has the pressure air, and uh, you just put your sample there and blow the blow the sand. I put a container somewhere, and other flow suck the sand and push on the surface. Okay, and you can do the uh, air jet erosion. Uh, this is the high temperature one. So our sand, our sand, uh, yeah, our sand there come down, and we have a furnace and heat the 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 coil inside, and your sand go through, then blow your sample here. So you can do the high temperature erosion. Again, uh, we needed to analyze the wound surface, okay? Uh, your surface an analysis is very important. Provide the information on the mechanism, okay? And give you some guideline or guidance for, the, for modify your materials or control your erosion, okay? So you can use the you know, uh, uh, SEM, EDX, microscope, X-ray to analyze your you know, surface morphology, so if you look at this one, you know, uh, it's different from your in material. So there should be some oxide there. Now you can analyze your oxide, what's the oxide, and uh, you get some idea. Some oxide is strong, some oxide is poor, and you can get an idea, okay? Okay, so that's the, that's the second one. So third one, corrosive wear, okay? This is also a very typical one because environment Quite often you have a corrosive environment. Okay, so so corrosive wear is the is kind of wear in the corrosive environment, and you have uh, corrosion, uh, you have a corrosion and wear kind of mixed together. Okay, for example here this is the elbow of a pipe a uh, uh, line steam line. So here you have a you have a impact of the the steam high sp high speed steam, but also you have um, Corrosion there, so that can accelerate the damage. Okay, or here uh, you are your metal, you get oxide, and before you are deal with uh, steel, now you deal with the oxide. Now of course you deal with the poor materials; it can make uh, this wear much faster. Okay, and this is the pond inside. You have uh, erosion, you have uh, uh, corrosion, uh, erosion, corrosion. So. This one just illustrated you, you, you deal with the porous rust, so that makes your materials easily be damaged. Okay, you continue, cor cor continue corrosion, continue to be removed, and you find the wear faster. Okay? So this one just show you, uh, 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 say, my, my material loss, total volume loss, uh, caused by wear and caused by corrosion. And another thing is a synergy, okay? Synergy, uh, say, your corrosion, you can make your surface generate a pit, uh, rust, okay? So if you have a pit, now under the force, that area you have a high increase of stress concentration. That means you'll be easy to be damaged mechanically, okay? Uh, you have a rust, that means your materials become poor, and that can be uh, easily be removed. So that can accelerate the wear, okay? As a corrosion enhanced wear, and your wear also enhanced the corrosion because your wear uh, introduced the defect which make your materials more anodic, okay? More reactive. And uh, also you can wear remove the corrosion product. Or if you have a, like a passive film, you can destroy the passive film, uh, then you can make the corrosion higher. Or if you are surface, you know, your film is damaged, 
uh, you may have a probably local galvanic effect. Okay, so those make your corrosion higher. So they they help each other, and uh, at the end of the you know the process, you will see uh, because this corrosion wear corrosion synergy, this one, usually this one uh, can take twenty to ninety percent of the total wear. Okay, now if you analyze, you will find that this one pure corrosion is much smaller than that one. Could be very small. If the corrosion there can cause this one could be can very large, okay. Uh, I just feel uh, uh, you know, few slides to show you a uh, little more detail. For example, you have a, a, a where you ha you can accelerate a, a corrosion and uh, okay, you generate a porous and oxide and can be easily destroyed. Now you have a uh, accelerate uh, dissolution because you are you, you keep remove this oxide you get a fresh surface, okay, and easy to be corroded, and uh, you also your stress concentration high because you have a pitting you have a kind of irregular, kind of uh, your morphology change, so those can increase the stress concentration, and uh, get your wear increased, okay, and uh, uh, and uh, here. Your stress also make your dislocation density increased, more and more anodic, you get a more corrosion. Okay, so that's help each other. Uh, and this one, let's say, if you have a corrosion, now you are second phase, you usually boundary there, you get a, you know, more corrosion. So you here, you are, you are, for example, this is your reinforcement phase could be easily be removed, or you get a crack there. You have a stress concentration. Then you have a crack of propagation, be easily be damaged. Okay, so that can make your wear easier. And uh, also, let's say your grain boundary corrosion accelerate. There is you easy to be uh, corroded. Then that you deal with this material and then you get a cracking and a very easy to propagate. Then you get a remo faster removal. Okay, and. Uh, so that's the corrosion uh, enhanced the uh, uh, wear, and the wear also enhanced the corrosion. For example, you do the plowing, and those uh, materials are, are more uh, uh, plastically deformed, more anodic, okay? So they can more sensitive to the corrosive environment uh, be uh, damaged, okay? And also your wear, you can damage the pastel film, now you can, of course, accelerate the corrosion, okay? And uh, experiment that shows under the corrosive wear attack, standard steel could be as ineffective as carbon steel. However, passive film, more or less beneficial. If you, if you stop uh, uh, action, stop, then, then your passive film really you know, develop and prevent the corrosion. But if you have that continuous wear corrosion, and your standard steel, not good, okay? Uh, okay. Okay, so I'd like to uh, um, show you the factors influence the corrosive wear, and of course, your pH level, okay? Uh, if you have pH level increased, and uh, your hydrogen concentration decreased, you can reduce the wear, okay? So people measure, uh, yeah, this is the show the pH level on the corrosion um, of a material. Now you have a high pH, and the, the wear loss reduced, uh, the corrosion reduced. Uh, the, the data, people summarize the data shows for steel in the, in the acid, uh, it's 14, where it's 14, 16 times higher than that in this solution, okay? which has a higher pH, and two or four times higher than those in uh, water uh, and the sodium chloride solution, okay? So pH level is obvious, that's a, uh, a more acidic, so your corrosivity increased. Uh, inhibitor and the industrial and the put inhibitor to uh, reduce the wear, reduce the corrosion. So um, for example, those inhibitor and you can see this data. This is show um, a steel. 
So with uh, uh, inhibitor corrosion potential higher, without inhibitor corrosion potential lower. And this is the one show um, uh, a steel, okay? So this the without inhibitor corrosion, with inhibitor 1% dot stuff and lower. And the corrosive wear, you see this is the without inhibitor with inhibitor. So you can see the larger uh, a drop with inhibitor. Or you can see the synergy of corrosion wear is quite uh, strong there. If you can spread, suppress the corrosion, uh, you can make the whole thing down. Okay. Uh, Passive film, uh, also very important. Okay. Uh, for example, um, uh, we use the rare earth element, for example, yttrium serum, to improve the passive pas film on the stainless steel aluminum alloy. Okay? And you can see they're quite effective um, to su suppress the wear. And this is the stainless steel. Okay? Stainless steel increased load, that's the corrosive wear. Now, this stainless steel, if you add a 1% yttrium, and you can see the wear loss reduced. Quite a, quite a lot, okay? And this e trim make a passive film better. This is why it's showed um, a scratch test, okay? Scratch the test, uh, increase the load, and this one is the electric contact resistance. So if you, uh, if you damage the film, your contact resistance drop, okay? So this one, this is the standard steel. You see the drop here, corresponding to the load, which is the two gram fail, okay? This one with uh, 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 e-trim, 1% e-trim, and you see the, the drop of the contact resistance is around the three, like a 3.3 gram fail. So that means your film become better once you add the e-trim, okay? And this is why I show the electro work function. Electro work function is the energy take electron from the material from inside of metal bring to the surface, okay? So if work function high, that means you need more energy to take electron away, then that means your surface is more stable, okay? And you can see here, this is the standard steel, 304, with 1% e-trim, and work function increased, okay? That means your surface is more stable, more corrosion resistant. Microstructure, uh, microstructure, now, if you have, uh, you know, for example, your grain boundary, you, you, you have, uh, you know, segregation. Now, you have a microelectrode because your in microstructure inhomogeneity always generate some area you have a more anodic, some area a more a, a cathodic. Then you have, a, you know, local galvanic fact enhanced. Now, you can enhance the corrosion. So for example, here, the second phase, if they are gonna, you know, damage corrosion, then this will be easy to be removed. So your, your wear will be higher, okay? Um, but you need a microstructure, okay? Because you need a mechanical, okay? If you don't have, a, if you're single phase, your material is not strong, okay? Uh, so, so therefore, when you select materials for application, uh, we have uh, just a few uh, general rules. This one, okay? Uh, if you deal with uh, a situation, your, your wear not strong, your corrosion not strong, so therefore you don't have a kind of specific requirement, okay? You use a general use, you know, carbon steel, cheap, and, and it'll be fine, okay? Now, if you have a strong wear, and your corrosion minor, not strong, now you should use the multi-phase structure, okay? Multi-phase structure, because you need a mechanical strength, Okay, or you can make your materials a little, uh, you know, increase their passivation capability. That will be that will be fine. Okay. Uh, now, if you have a, if your wear not very strong, but your corrosion strong, so in this case, you should use the you know corrosion resistance materials. For example, your uh, uh, steel, uh, stainless steel. Okay, you make this passivation capability, you know, enhanced. Uh, make your passive film better. Uh, for instance, you know, we add an e trim and we can make materials better, okay? Um, yeah, 
uh, each term improved the passivation capability of uh, standard steel and resulting in the enhanced resistance to sliding wear in this assay. Okay. Now, the last one, this is the difficult one. This is the, you have a strong wear, strong corrosion. So in this case, uh, you obviously you have to use something like a multi-phase alloy. You make a material strong. Now you have to make a material has a, has a strong passivation capability. Okay? For example, in the oil sand industry, uh, the high chromium cast iron. Okay? Uh, this one, the chromium, sometimes you, uh, usually they use a 27% to 40%. And that's a high chromium concentration in make materials passivation capability high, strong, uh, but also materials pretty hard, okay? So use that one. Um, uh, another approach is if, you are, if your wear is not that strong, okay? Now you can strengthen your material, use the solid solution strengthening, okay? Which is not as effective as the second phase precipitation strengthening, but still make your material strong, okay? But good thing is, you, uh, you don't generate microelectrode. You make a microstructure uh, homogeneous, okay? So you can add uh, you know, different uh, element, which is a strong, for example, carbide forming uh, uh, element. Uh, but this is, uh, you don't add uh, too much. So they just play a kind of solid solution strengthening a role, okay? Without a generator second phase. So they are strong, uh, but the corrosion resistance is higher, okay? Because you don't have a kind of galvanic effect or, or, or not that much galvanic effect, okay? Uh, so those are kind of general guidelines, but in real life, you have to test. You can make materials, you have to test, okay? So I show you um, uh, uh, some approaches um, or technique. A simple way is, you know, ping on disk. You make this uh, uh, process in the in the solution. Okay, you have a container. You do the wear in a in a corrosive environment, and see how much materials be damaged. Okay, and this is our uh, uh, slurry pot erosion tester. So you sample rotate in the material in the, in the, in a slurry. Uh, you can change the uh, solution. Okay, involve the corrosion. And, uh, and uh, here is the uh, slurry jet. You inject a slurry, and you can make a acidic or, or sodium chloride or whatever you add with the sand, high speed impact. Uh, you can evaluate your materials, okay? Uh, this one uh, used for, uh, for example, you, you, uh, you needed to investigate your passive film. So this is the, we call the, uh, 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 universal tribometer, tri which you can use the, to scratch the surface. Okay, this is load, compressive load, increased load to see what's the electrical contact resistance change. From there, you can evaluate uh, um, uh, how strong the film. For example, um, for the microstructure of steel, standard steel, uh, under this load, the film started to fail. Uh, that load uh, completely failed. And a nanostructured steel, and that one initial failure load increased to one newton. That's a final total failure, okay, failure. So you can see the, use that one to evaluate the passive field. Uh, so I skip this part. Uh, and surface analysis is important, okay. We analyze the surface, you can get an idea and say, oh, you have a corrosive, corrosion uh, product. And if you see the cross section, say, oh yeah, I have a crack fracture there. So that means uh, you may involve the stress corrosion cracking. So that helps you to understand the mechanism instead of just ranking, okay? Uh, okay, so, so that's a three major industrial well mode. Okay, uh, now second part I'll just show you um, steel, basically steel and cast iron. Uh, their performance, okay? Uh, a material may perform differently under different wear condition, okay? For example, this is the very typical in the mining area, mining, oil sand mining, uh, 
they use a tungsten carbide, a nickel-based hard face overlay to protect their mining machine. And it's very, very good, okay? Uh, especially under the low stress abrasion, that's excellent, okay? But if you use this material under the uh, impact wear and corrosive wear condition, that is not that impressive, okay? This is the, you, you have a you know, second phase there, reinforcing phase. You have a metal ceramic, a metal ceramic, and then corrosion is easier. Okay, now you get a synergy, corrosion wear synergy, then you get a lot of damage. Okay, so, so people try, you know, this is something people, you know, people get a, a, you know, many years practice, and eventually find, yeah, we have to find a way to select materials in a proper way, okay? Uh, and this just give you an idea, this is the in the oil sand, Alberta, the oil sand, is, uh, uh, the reservoir is quite a, is a huge, okay? I talked to the people there, and um, the reserve, they told me, say, can be used for 400 years at the current oil consumption level. So I said, that's too, too large, right? I said, I, they said, the, the, I said, that's true. The reserve is there, but current technology, we can do 100 years. But those, a lot of oil sand is too deep, very hard to get out. But once your technology is good enough, yeah, you can get. But reserve, they say, can be used for 400 years, okay? Uh, before they used uh, this the kind of giant uh, excavator, uh, you see the, you see the, the here, it's quite a, quite a large. And they found, the, uh, well, very powerful, but easy to get a damage. You get a, not only the wear, you get a fracture, you get a different thing. They found that you know this is this is too uh, too costly. You this one you know, you replace it. You have to stop. You replace. So now they use a small shovel. They found it's more flexible, easy to replace. Okay, and also you can use it to prevent some. You know, for example, this one you hit something very hard. You hard to prevent. This is too too big. Okay, so people gain a lot of experience, and then uh, you know, summarize say. Okay, we get some general guideline for material selection, okay? For example, for abrasive wear, now we have to choose material, materials that are harder than abrasive, okay? Now you should have a good strength hardening capability for abrasive wear. Now, at a heat wear, that means you have a larger chemical interaction at the Now we should choose materials has a lower solubility Okay, for example, um, for example, my nickel and copper, and they, are, they have a very high uh, solubility. They are basically the, they mixed each other homogeneously. Okay? So if you deal with a copper, use the nickel, that's not a good choice because they, they, they like to stuck together. They like each other. So you have to choose materials that don't like each other. means they don't have a higher uh, Compatibility, or they do not, you know, dissolve in each other homogeneously. So we should choose materials has a lower compatibility, and they should have a high resistance to uh, thermal softening, because a lot of wear and temperature increase, and adhesion increased. So you should have a resistance to thermal softening. Uh, that means they should have a higher melting temperature. Okay. Uh, for erosion, now if you have a low angle impact erosion, and you should use a hard materials. If you have a low angle, high angle impact, you should use the tough materials, okay? And if you have a fatigue, you wear it under the fatigue, cyclic load, uh, you should choose a hard material, tough materials. You should prevent non-metallic inclusion in metal, because that one, inclusion metal, they, they are not uh, compatible, so your interface poor. Now, fatigue, uh, if you have a deck there, it's easy to propagate, get a uh, corrosion, no, uh, fracture, uh, crack propagation. Try to minimize the surface micro cracks, and you should use a high yang modulus module, uh, materials, okay? Corrosive wear, and uh, you should choose materials which has, um, you know, naturally has a high electrode potential, means they are more inert to the corrosive environment. Or they should have a higher passivation capability with a good passive films and resistance to wear. Uh, if you have a high temperature wear, 
you should have your materials have a higher temperature strength. You should have your oxide protective. Uh, you should have a higher thermal conductivity, easy to conduct heat away without the build up, the, you know, make the temperature continuous increase in the contact area. Uh, if you have a high speed sliding wear, that's for tool, for example, then you should have a higher thermal conductivity, reduce the heat. Uh, you should have uh, resistance to thermal shock. Uh, low thermal expansion, because that one can generate uh, thermal stress. So you try to minimize uh, thermal stress. High melting temperature, because this the temperature could be high, frictional heating. Right? So, so this is a general, general guideline. Uh, you have to test. Uh, you have to also consider the cost. Okay. I work for the uh, uh, a company, steel company, uh, a project. They they do the they use a scrap steel and remelt, make a grinding bore. Okay. And that grinding bore, uh, for some application, pretty good. But for some application, is it's relatively brittle. So. Uh, you know, you, you, you take those uh, scraped metals, kind of impurity and those things make a toughness not very, very good. So when we look at that one, we say, well, this is well, easy to modify, you know, but they don't want to, okay, because of the cost. If once they, they have enough uh, custom, why they should do this, okay, unless they cannot sell and then do the research. So, so this is the industry, this is the very important part, okay. Uh, okay, uh, carbon steel. Uh, for steel, carbon steel that's a you know, basic one, uh, low cost, high availability, so lot of fabrication. Okay, you see the uh, for the bearing material, shafting, uh, shafting gears, uh, tool die, you know, uh, you know, dive. Uh, so a lot of fabrication. Uh, usually uh, for application, th their surface usually treated, modified to make it more durable. Uh, okay, so those things, you, you learn, you know, this is the Ferris Institute, right? So this is the just basic thing. Uh, so basically, I don't want to just talk too much. Uh, now, this is the face diagram of your steel. And uh, now here, you have your tech point. So if you have a um, carbon concentration, low carbon concentration, you get a hyper-eutectoid, eutectoid, hyper-eutectoid steel, okay? Uh, you can easily to modify the microstructure by changing the carbon concentration. Or you can do a you know, TTT diagram, you can by doing a, uh, through the heat treatment, you can get a different uh, type of microstructure, okay? You can get, uh, you know, perlite, uh, um, bainite, or martensite by, you know, quench, uh, tempering, or do different things, okay? So, so you can have a different way to modify materials, okay? Uh, so I'll just show you here. Uh, oh, sorry. This is the. Yeah, this should be change. This is the this is the perlite, okay? And this is the high, hyper uh, eutectoid material. So this should be this one. Uh, actually, I changed it last night. I, this is another one. There's another. I t too many files in my uh, memory stick. Okay, and this is the hy hyper eutectoid. Okay, so you have a cementite. Here and I have a, a, a perlite. Okay, so this one is the hardest one, and this is the one is soft one. Okay, hypo you hypo you soft one. Okay, so when you are when you are for the uh, when you are carbon concentration in the, in the range of uh, you know, 0 0.676, you have a perlite. Okay, structure. Uh, that's a, your alpha iron and a cementite. And this, this structure is about five times harder than the austenite, okay? And uh, you can change the prior to the structure, make it a little fine, okay? By your, uh, when you do the cooling, cool rate faster, uh, you can get a fine perlite, you can increase the hardness. Therefore, you can increase your wear resistance, okay? Uh, so generally speaking, if you increase the uh, carbon concentration, now you can make your wear resistance higher because it makes it become harder, okay? Uh, but if you, uh, let's say, you increase the hardness, uh, you will lose the toughness, okay? This is the 
something, you know, you gain something, you lose something. You cannot get both. Uh, but it's possible. Nanotechnology, uh, people, that's why people are very interested, try to improve. You can get uh, both hardness, toughness increased, okay? But generally speaking, uh, 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 you get something, you lose something. How did you get both? Uh, so there's a critical uh, kind of, uh, this is the show the wear resistance as a function of your fracture toughness. So initially, fracture toughness is low. That means your material is brittle. You get a more wear. Uh, you get a more wear. This is a resistance to wear, so your resistance is low. Now you increase the toughness. Now you see the oh, increased, okay? So there is the, the kind of best combination of your hardness and toughness. Now when your toughness continue increased, now you lose the hardness. Now you see the wear, oh, decreased. Wear resistance decreased, okay? So there's the, uh, uh, that's a range. Uh, you have a optimal combination of hardness, toughness. Okay, so martensite steel. Martensite steel, we know that's the, the hardest materials, okay? So uh, if you use a martensite steel, uh, especially deal with the low stress wear, that's very good, okay? But if you have an impact, uh, this is not that good. Modern side is, is relatively brittle compared to other uh, microstructure. So if you are slow sliding modern side steel, if you have impact, okay, or erosion, uh, and, and this is not, good not the best choice, okay? So this is modern side. Now, now we have to change this one to a temper martensite. side. So this is the commercially important, okay? Uh, you, get the, you do the tempering, you get a very fine cementite, and this material is pretty strong, but tougher than the martensite, okay? So temper martensite, uh, you do the you know, temperature, not very high temperature, you do the tempering, and uh, you generate this kind of microstructure. So this is the, uh, a good choice for, for example, erosion, uh, or you have impact wear. Uh, austenite, austenitic uh, steel, and uh, mountain side is brittle. Uh, sometimes, if, especially for the mining application, we want to have a higher strength hardening capability. So people just keep the austenite, and during the deformation, this austenite can change it to the mountain side. That can, you know, make your materials has a higher strength hardening capability. So in order to achieve this, people added the manganese. Okay, so to stabilize the austenite. Okay, now you have a higher toughness. Now, this one, if you have an impact, uh, this is the good choice. Okay, uh, you have a good uh, work hardening capability. Um, Okay, so this hardenability is attributed to the outside the change to the mountain side under the impact. Okay, uh, this one, you know, this type of uh, 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 material under the wear, under the impact wear condition, and the people said it's changed to mountain side, and TM can analyze, can see the wear debris, you can see the mountain side before it's out, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, uh, your, your mountain side induced during the deformation where uh, your hardness increased, okay? And uh, your strength hardening capability increased. And also mountain side, uh, the volume is a little bigger than austenite. You may introduce some, uh, you know, compressive stress, which might be uh, beneficial because the wear is more uh, you know, under the tensile stress, you get a fracture. Compression is less, okay? So you introduce the compressive stress, uh, uh, it's, it's more or less benefit your uh, wear resistance, okay? So, uh, yeah, so this manganese steel, why did they use it in the mining industrial? Uh, for the moving machine, pump, uh, or handling and mining facilities. Uh, now we have a we have a very good coating hard facing, uh, but you can use this one as a base make a coating. Okay, depend on your application. Okay, uh, so generally speaking, 
uh, for the wear resistance, uh, your ferrite, that's, that's very soft, okay? So wear resistance, of course, low. Now uh, you have a perlite, it's better. Now austenite, uh, uh, martensite steel, uh, higher. And bainite, a uh, martensite. Uh, your temper martensite is somewhere um, here, okay? So your wear resistance increased. And this is just a general, general thing, okay? We talk about, for example, pin on disc sliding. Uh, you may have this, but if I have an impact, uh, this may not be the best, okay? But this just ge general speaking, you know, because this is harder, hardness increased that way. Uh, okay, I forgot that one. Uh, okay. Modify the carbon steel, you can add a different element. Uh, you can make their harder, okay? Or uh, you, can, you can, one purpose is increase the hardenability, okay? Hardenability, uh, well, this is just general, very simple, uh, uh, brief uh, illustration. So if you have a bar you quench, okay? Uh, you are inside, because you quench, you're only outside the quick, cool quick, inside is still hot. So you're inside, you have a, you know, perite, outside you have a mountain side. And when you reduce this uh, diameter to a center level, your middle, you have a 50% of perite, 50% of mountain side. Uh, your diam this diameter, uh, defined as the ideal critical diameter. When you are bar smaller than this one, now you get a more mountain side, your whole thing, okay? So this is the measure of the hardenability. Now if you add the different element, uh, you can make this diameter larger, okay? So um, I, I, don't, I want to skip this part. You, you, you should know those things. Okay? This is the hardenability, okay? Okay, um, you add those element, you can also um, sort the solution strengthening, okay? You add those element, and their impurity, your dislocation here, for example, you have a compression, compressive stress, tensile stress. Now, if you have impurity uh, atoms, big atoms stay here, because this is tensile, you add a bigger, particle here, now your stress will be reduced. So your dislocation feel more comfortable to stay there because energy low, okay? So uh, your matrix becomes stronger. Or if you have a small uh, in, you know, atoms, foreign atoms, and they can stay on the, in, in the tensile region, uh, which you can reduce the tensile strength, okay? So that minimizes energy, so matrix become uh, stronger, okay? So you, ha you, you can improve your materials. Uh, also, you can add um, those elements more than 5%, now you can have a second phase, okay? And those can, be, uh, can form very hard uh, part carbide to uh, you get a strong materials, okay? Uh, you add the you know, manganese, you can stabilize the austenite, and you can make it strong. And uh, you can improve your, uh, for example, passive film, okay? Uh, this, is, this is the carbon steel, okay? In, in, uh, in uh, those the solution, you see the you know, weight loss, okay? And this is the standard steel. Uh, you have uh, uh, passivation uh, uh, capability, corrosion resistance, and you see, the, you see the wear loss is much lower than that one, okay? So, uh, standard steel, okay, if you have a corrosive environment. Uh, I'd like to show you this one. This is the um, cast iron, okay, 27% of uh, chromium cast iron. And uh, if you add uh, rare earth, for example, add the 0.5% of yttrium, and you see the wear loss decrease a lot, okay, okay, quite a, quite a lot. Uh, but if you add too much, and uh, nothing may not be very beneficial to the passive film. This is experiment observation, okay? So you can modify your uh, uh, passive materials by adding a uh, rare earth element, okay? Okay, so for the, uh, yeah, for the oil sand, and uh, you know, 
the, the basic the, the frame of your machine is steel, okay? Steel. So they used uh, a steel. For example, they used uh, triple steel, and you have a mixture of your ferrite, uh, bainite, and uh, returned austenite, and they used it for the different uh, application for their mining machine. Okay? Uh, and this one show um, steel application in the oil sand. Uh, you see the cutting edge crusher. So they they used uh, steel and uh, but also used a hard facing overlay. Okay. So this just give you you can see the steel in the uh, in oil sand industrial quite a lot of applications. Uh, one of the one of the major applications is the pipeline. Okay, the pipeline. Uh, okay. In the, in, the, in the oil sand and oil and gas industry, people use a pipeline to trans, transport the diluted bitumen. For example, uh, in uh, uh, Alberta, there we have uh, oil sand. The oil sand, they don't directly make oil to sand. They use the uh, oil sand or diluted bitumen, send it to, through the pipeline, send it to, for example, to states, some, some uh, refining plant. Then they, there they do the final uh, kind of a treatment to get oil out. So this can save the, the cost, okay? Uh, so you see the pipeline here, uh, you know, from, the, from Alberta to, uh, you know, this is the existing pipeline, and this is what the, they're supposed to do, to extend it to the Texas, okay? But now this, this is the Kingston project, uh, you know, last year, and uh, uh, didn't, uh, government didn't approve it. Because the public, they worry about uh, pollution. They worry about if your pipeline broken, uh, uh, you know, contaminate uh, their the land. So, but but the people continue persuade the government. Yeah, you know, because this is the important uh, 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 project. Okay. Also there and uh, China uh, also get involved in the oil uh, oil sand kind of oil, oil sand industrial. So there's a pipeline. Um, project, they will build the pipeline from the Alberta to the the uh, yeah Enbridge with uh, pipeline to uh, some area and uh, for transport. I don't know exactly that data, but this is the uh, recently the oil sand industry is quite active involved in the pipeline network uh, development. Okay, uh, so pipeline. Uh, uh, Typical one, this is a very typical pipeline uh, steel, okay? Uh, for example, X70. So you see the carbon concentration pretty low, okay? Uh, and this is the one commercially used, okay? And the people also try uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, steels. Actually, I have a project with uh, Costco. I will just finish a three year uh, project. And uh, this one, actually, for the, all the the, the materials we rank, this is the poorest one, okay? This one has a low, very low uh, uh, carbon concentration. If you increase the carbon concentration, you'll find it's, it's better, okay? But, but why people don't use that one? The better one, your carbon concentration increased, your weatherability could be affected. So, so you need to do further work. Uh, and also another thing is the cost, okay? You have to make sure your cost not high. But people, you know, very active to try different steel and show people. For example, this volume loss, uh, if your harvest increased, your volume loss decreased, okay? And uh, so, uh, now we, we tried, for example, this is the steel we try, and, uh, uh, okay, not clear. But you can see here, this is the hardness. This is the weight loss. So high hardness, and you get uh, less wear, much lower wear. Now soft material get more wear. Uh, dark type materials get more wear because they are soft. Okay. Uh, strength hardening. Okay. If you have a high strength hardening, your wear low. Uh, but also, also the, this one showed the uh, absorbed energy before failure which is equal to the kind of area before failure, okay? 
So you can see we try different uh, steel and you see quite a data. You cannot get a very good uh, idea. But if you look at this one, this is the manganese steel, which is very, has a higher energy absorption capability, much low wear. But this one, for example, have a similar energy absorption, but it gets much higher wear. But if you look at their, if you look at their mechanical property, this one is more like this, okay? Harder, uh, ductility lower. Uh, this one, soft, but ductility high, larger. But, so they have a similar uh, energy absorption capability, uh, but you see the wear is, rate is very different. So this one tell you, um, tell, tell us, uh, you should use this material. Uh, energy absorption is a, is a parameter uh, to help you to understand your material's development. You should have a higher strength and a higher, larger area. Uh, this one is better than this one. Even you have an equal area, but this is too soft. Okay. Uh, okay. Standard steel used for you know, for the tailing line, uh, separation vessel. Uh, yeah, those involved the uh, corrosion involved. Okay. So, yeah. So they use the duplex standard steel used. Uh, okay. Uh, now they have a, they have a, a for the oil sand operation. They do the in situ uh, uh, oil sand operation. They call the sadi. So basically, they blow the the steam into the area there and locally track the oil out and suck the oil out, okay? So, so there uh, uh, required uh, steel, a lot of the pipeline, okay, uh, pipes. Uh, so this was still under the development. We don't have a clear kind of standard. So people, different companies try different materials, but, but steel pipes uh, you need. So you need a, you need a steel withstand a high temperature, withstand a corrosion, uh, yeah. Or also those those things can affect your, yeah, uh, yeah. performance. Uh, grounding ball for crush the ore, okay. So this is the you know, the conventional steel and uh, yeah, just list there. Yeah. So the select materials based on the wear mode. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> one more, one more thing. Uh, just very quick. This one, uh, carbon steel, uh, no, cast iron. Okay. So cast iron. If you are, if you are a carbon concentration larger than one point eight, that's a cast iron. Okay. Uh, also, a lot of vacation. You see, there's a lot of vacation. Uh, now, a whiter cast iron is a very hard one. For example, people make a pipeline. Uh, especially the indoor pipeline, you need a high erosion resistance, which is the, which is much stronger than steel. But this is the, you know heavy, and it's not easy to, for the outside uh, you know the pipeline transport. That's maybe also costly, uh, but very very erosion resistant. And this is the pumps. It's a huge pumps, uh, cast iron. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, gray cast iron, uh, you have uh, you know, carbon concentration that much. Uh, usually you have a uh, graphite plus a matrix, okay? Uh, so this is the graphite, uh, gray cast iron. Uh, also you have a nodular cast iron, okay? They have a similar uh, structure, uh, uh, composition, but the morphology of your uh, graphite the shape is different, okay? So their wear performance uh, a little different. This one is, uh, this is the better, because this one, you have a lower stress concentration compared to this one, okay? Uh, okay, and also materials have a higher toughness, because this one, those people can generate uh, stress concentration higher, get a fracture, okay? So they used as a cylinder, a liner, a different application because graphite is a solid lubricant. So you have a low friction. Okay. Uh, this one, white iron. This is the very uh, very, very resistant materials has a higher 
hardness, okay? Because inside uh, we don't have a graphite, we have a carbide, okay? So we have a different type of carbide, depending on your element you add in, uh, very strong, okay? For example, this is the uh, carbide, and uh, uh, primary carbide, you take the carbide and iron, okay? So, so very hard, uh, has a high, very high resistance to sliding wear. Now, just want to show, okay, if in terms of wear resistance, gray iron, nodular iron, and white iron, that direction, okay? Uh, then you can, um, you can add a different element to uh, modify it, okay? Uh, I, I, I want to just talk about this one. That, that, is, that is something typical. If you check a handout, a uh, 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 handout book, uh, you, will, you will see uh, you know, different elements, what's their function. But what I like to see, say here is um, for, the, for the cast iron, and we need a carbide. But carbide, you want more carbide, that means you have to increase your carbon concentration. Now, if the carbon concentration is high, you will get a, a hyperutectic structure, which is you have a primary carbide. Now, the carbide, uh, if you do the low stress wear, and this is pretty good, but if you have impact, now you get a fracture, okay? So uh, you have to try to minimize the fracture. If you want to get rid of this primary one, you can reduce the carbon concentration, but you will have, uh, you will just become soft, okay? So, so what we can do is, um, we can, for example, we can use a hypoeutectoid uh, cast iron. We, you can add a foreign element, which you can form the foreign carbide. For example, uh, here, add the titanium to the material. For example, this is the original material. You have a primary carbide. You add a titanium. So titanium will grab the carbon to form a titanium carbide, uh, which is not big. Okay, and uh, shift your matrix carbon concentration to you take you take a point. Okay, then you will have something like this. You have a you take a structure without the primary carbide, but you 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 have you lose the chromium carbide, but you have a titanium carbide, which is harder than chromium carbide and also fine. Okay, so you have a higher strength and your toughness also increase because you get rid of the big coarse uh, carbide, okay? So this one you can see here. Add the titanium to the, this material and the hardness increase and your wear, uh, wear loss decreased, okay? But if you add too much titanium, now your matrix carbon moved to the hypoeutectic side. Then you are, you are carbide not enough. Then that's the reason why, oh, go higher, okay. Um, okay, so this I want to show you, we did a, a project with, uh, we have a project with uh, oil sand industrial, the pump, okay, slurry pump. Uh, so now we're currently we're working on the, the cast iron, modify the cast iron by, this is the one of the approach. We, we use a different element, foreign carbide that put in, and we can get uh, quite a much better performance. Another thing is uh, recently, uh, recent 10 years, uh, there's a new, new concept called a high entropy structure, uh, which is you put uh, more than five elements to a material, and there's no host element. So your structure is quite a random. You get a very, very fine particle faces, quite a random. So that matrix is very, very hard. Uh, so we use that concept to modify the cast iron. Uh, but problem is you put uh, too, much, too many, then you, uh, you lose the toughness. Because you cannot control. Some phase may not be good. You cannot control. So we still use the iron as the base element, but you add a different type of thing to it. And now we can get um, something around the two times better wear resistance. Uh, now we're still working on try to improve the toughness. Uh, by, by adding a manganese, for example. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's it. It's quite too much. <laughs> Thank you.